Good evening and welcome to CYC News for today, the 19th of October 2014 and the 9th of Baba 1731 AM. I'm Angie. In today's headlines, heavy rains flood the tents of many displaced Christians in Iraq. Leaders of the Syriac and Armenian Orthodox churches unite against violence. The Roman Catholic Church calls on Christians to cling to their lands and their heritage. The former Archbishop of Canterbury speaks out about two kidnapped Syrian archbishops. And Coptic Orphan celebrates its 25th anniversary of caring for orphan children in Egypt. Heavy rains flooded the tents of displaced Christians in the Kurdistan region of Iraq on Thursday evening. The displaced live in public areas, including churches and town squares. This leads to chaos inside these camps as residents search for other tents where their acquaintances and relatives live. Many of the tents flooded at dawn on Thursday because of the heavy rain falling on different areas of the region. More than 30,000 displaced Christians currently live in simple tents in squares, churches and gardens, which lack the basic necessities of life. They suffer from difficult circumstances that may cause a human humanitarian catastrophe if their conditions are not quickly addressed and their daily suffering ended. More than 125,000 Christians left their homeland in the Nineveh Plain after Daesh took control of the area in August. Over 7,000 Christians left their homes in Nineveh in northern Iraq on July 10th, most of them escaping with just their clothing. Over 15,000 Christians left Iraq during this period to neighboring countries to register in the organizations of immigration. In the midst of the crises facing the Middle East, two Christian patriarchs have joined forces against the storm. His Holiness Karakin II, Supreme Patriarch and Catholicos of all Armenians, and His Holiness Marignatius Ephraim II, Patriarch of Antioch and all the East, signed a joint declaration on Monday. They then issued a statement from the mother see of the holy Echmizadin in Armenia. The patriarchs stated that they wish to affirm the unity of faith and the willful desire to continue cooperation to fight the violence being committed against Christians and other religious minorities in Iraq and Syria. The patriarchs said, we urge and pray for the immediate release of two kidnapped archbishops, Mar Gregorius Yohanna Ibrahim and Bulas Yazigi, who were taken in Syria, not heard from since. Their statement also touched on the Armenian genocide of the First World War, which claimed one and a half million and the losses of the 500,000 of the Syrian population. The executive body of the Supreme Council of the Roman Catholic Community in Lebanon called on Middle Eastern Christians to cling to their lands, heritage, and religious and humanitarian values, in spite of difficult conditions in a Thursday statement. The body mentioned that the Middle East is the cradle of all heavenly religions and they called for tolerance and coexistence. It also expressed its faith that the region would regain moderation, openness, and respect for other val others' values. He also called on media to be more careful in order to reduce the sectarian and racial tensions, Al-Nashra reported. The body also urged the election of a new Lebanese president, saying the position should not be empty because this would adversely affect various constitutional institutions and the political, economic and social stability. The executive body also visited villages of Bika to show solidarity with the residents who face real security threats in addition to the financial crisis suffered by a huge number of Lebanese people. The former Archbishop of Canterbury, Rowan Williams, drew the attention of the world to the plight of two Christian archbishops who were kidnapped in Syria by Islamic extremists more than one year ago. He said, the West cannot ignore the poisonous effects of religious tyranny in the Middle East. During a, this was said during a speech at the Cheltenham Lit Literature Festival in England this week and the Daily Mail reported on this. Archbishop Johanna Ibrahim of the Syrian Orthodox Church and Archbishop Boulos Yazigi of the Greek Orthodox Church were abducted on April 22, 2013, near the Syrian city of Aleppo. Unidentified gunmen stopped the bishop's car and killed their driver. The abducted bishops have not been released amid uncertainty about their fate.
Coptic Orphans has celebrated its 25th anniversary yesterday in the presence of a crowd of Egyptian dignitaries in a major hotel near Washington. Nermeen Riyad, Coptic Orphans founder and executive director, delivered a speech on the occasion. She reviewed the efforts made by the organization over the past 25 years and how it played a role in the lives of 30,000 children. The organization is now taking care of 10,000 orphan children who are supported in their academic journey and receive training in life skills through the 300 wor workshops that Coptic orphans have provided so far. Ms. Riyad told the audience, Coptic orphans are deeply committed to our homeland, just as you are here. Many of you here were born, raised, educated in the US or abroad, and still your ties to Egypt remain strong and your love even stronger. She continued to say, together we will expand village programs that bring Christians and Muslims together to instill the values of trust and living peacefully side by side. She thanked the donors and 450 volunteers who serve 675 villages in Egypt, as well as employees in the organization. His Holiness Pope Tawadros praised the work of the organization in a recorded speech, touching on the organization's efforts in a number of areas of care for orphan children. A report by BBC says international pledges of deployments and aid for Africa's Ebola hit regions have not yet had any impact on the epidemic, a major medical charity says. Christopher Stokes of Médecins Sans Frontières says the disease was still out of control. He says that it was ridiculous that volunteers working for his charity were bearing the brunt of care in the worst affected countries. The disease has killed about 4,500 people so far, mostly in West Africa. Médecins Sans Frontières runs about 700 out of the 1,000 beds available in treatment facilities, Liberia, Sierra Leone and Guinea. The BBC's Mark Doyle at the UN Ebola Logistics Base in Ghana says it is generally agreed that at least three times that number are needed. Donors have given almost $400 million to UN agencies and aid organizations following an appeal launched in September for $988 million. Separately, the UN is seeking $1 billion for an Ebola trust fund to provide a flexible source of backup money to contain Ebola. But UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon on Thursday made another urgent appeal saying the trust fund had received only $100,000 from Colombia, though $20 million has been pledged. Meanwhile, the World Health Organization has announced that Senegal is now officially free of Ebola as it has gone 42 days without any sign of the virus. And that's all for CYC News today. Stay tuned for more Christian content on CYC. I'm Angie and from the CYC studios in Sydney, Australia, good night and God bless.